I'm like, wait a minute, nigga. I'm only 30, what was I at the time? 36, 37, and you will call me an old lady? That might be a Southern thing, but I take that as an insult. Just like, you know, the people around here, they call me the pretty dinosaur. Nigga, I'm a pretty dinosaur? Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube and for a small monthly fee of five dollars you babies yes you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the youtube gets it if the youtube gets it now let's talk about uh david ritz and etta james rage to survive i think this is part eight so where we left off she had just touched on her relationship with harvey fuqua you know harvey fuqua you know but we gonna get to that you know, a scandal later, okay? But before, you know, she got the grooving and moving on him, she was messing with another member of the Moon Glows. And if you don't know who the Moon Glows are, they are a group that was based from Washington, D.C., you know, my city, okay? And it also included the young Marvin Gaye. Okay, but anyway, before she got the hunching on the Harvey Fuqua, she had bumped into Bobby Lester. Okay, Bobby Lester was the first dude that she ever see saw get down with that jug. So let me say this: a couple of y'all told me down in the comments that back then that was the drug of choice. Okay. We know this also because young Rickety James was shooting at like 17 years old. Damn, you niggas can't smoke weed. He be chain smoking cigarettes and sniffing plenty of heroin. And although I watched with interest, I wasn't ready for a taste of the smack for myself. Later on, I saw him break out the needles and knew he was serious about getting high. Bobby was also the first cat to mention Chess Records to me, the Chicago label who recorded the Moon Glows. Now you can hear me on the radio and you can see me at the clubs, but as Marie Adams sang, I'm gonna play the honky tonks and I did, but there were no big hits. I was far from being a big star. If you wanna be a big star, Bobby Luster told me, get on Chess. The Chess Brothers are some smart Jews who know how to sell records. I filed the thought in the back of my mind as I went on my merry way, falling head over heels in love with Bobby's boss, Harvey. From Jump Street, this was basically a one-sided love affair. For all the time we went together, which was a couple of years, I was faithful. I considered myself Harvey's old lady. Do you know that? It's crazy to me, y'all. Look, wait a minute, hold on. I'm going to get back to it. But when I was messing with the Texan, he used to call me his old lady. I'm like, wait a minute, nigga. I'm only 30. What was I at the time? 36, 37, and you will call me your old lady? That might be a Southern thing, but I take that as an insult. Just like, you know, the people around here, they call me the pretty dinosaur. Nigga, I'm a pretty dinosaur? I considered myself Harvey's old lady, though. That was naive. See, Harvey was a player. He had different women, and I was just one of them. In my heart, I knew I was fooling myself, but I was young and stupid, and I took all my earnings and bought him diamonds and high-five sets. I thought buying him gifts would help me keep him. With people I like, that's always been my pattern, my hope, my fear. 
Sexually, I was too young to know the relationship was lacking. Oh my God, give me two more minutes, y'all, before we go further. Do you know how many ninjas I look back at, back in the day when I was a teenager, hunching? I'm like, I wasn't getting nothing. I didn't have my first O until I was 19, child, and it crept on more up on me, and I didn't know what it was. I was like, oh, oh, what is this nigga doing to me? Oh, oh, oh. So I'm saying to myself, is this is what's supposed to happen? What the fuck was I doing all them years that that wasn't happening? Ladies, let's just be honest with ourselves. Sometimes we was just laying there letting him do his business on top of us because we wasn't getting nothing but the satisfaction of the closeness. For now, I looked on Harvey as my man. He was the older and worldly and the boss of his own sound. He eased through the world of music and promotion with a sort of slippery sophistication I found exciting. Girls, okay, you like them bad boys, okay? It's not until we grow up that we realize that them bad boys do bad things, like steal your wallet and fuck your cousin. Harvey was a one-of-a-kind daddy. John Lewis was another. John Lewis became the most important man of my young life. Maybe because we were never lovers. John was smart enough not to confuse issues. Our relationship outlasted all my romances. John became my mentor, my manager, and the man who more than, than anyone laced my boots to real life. You know what's funny? It's funny to me how you always come across that one person in your life, that one man or woman that tell you that one thing and it wakes you up, okay? Let me tell you right quick, let me walk away. I swear to God, I'm gonna come back, okay? I'm doing a lot of this. I had uh, regular coffee today, y'all, forgive me, okay? I might be with the shits today. Anyway, I was in college, right? And I was messing with this dude. Ooh, he was so cute to me. He looked just like Ice Cube, Ice Cube right? Ooh, I was on me some O'Shea Jackson back in the day, right? So at any rate, um, I asked him, you know, I was like, what was, why was it that me and you couldn't work out, baby? He said, because you was weak. You was weak. You, and you flirt too much, okay? And the problem with you is that flirting gets you in trouble. It does, y'all. It does. With me, it does. I can't tell you how many times I done created stalkers just by flirting, okay? But sometimes it takes... Um, you know, a person to just be raw with you. Ooh, one more. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Remember I told you Regina Hall stole my boyfriend? Remember? Okay? And I asked my boyfriend, boyfriend, why don't you, you know, want to be with me? He was like, what we going to do? Live with you and your mom? I'm going to live with you and your mammy and your sister? What? No. You need to get up and get out and get something on your own, right? So that's why he ended up choosing Regina over me because Regina had herself together. I did. So you know how us women, we get all giddy, you know, over power. We can't help it, okay? That's just what it is. We get giddy over power and success. That's just what we are. I mean, I, we can't help the way God made us. The dude, John Lewis, had a pappy named Howard Lewis. Howard Lewis was a serious player in Texas. It seems that this dude, Howard Lewis, John Lewis's father, had one end of Texas while this other dude named Don Roby had the other side of Texas in regards to um, doing shows with blacks in it, okay, or promoting shows for uh, African Americans. Now, the thing about it was, was that John's father, Howard, had set Ray Charles up with his first manager, Jeff Brown, okay? Before Ray Charles had uh, Jeff Brown, he was just anything out there. He was just everywhere, you know, just trying to groove and get his thing together. Plus, you know, shooting dope at the same time. John had brown skinned face and resembled an Indian. At 6'4", he was distinguished looking and smart like a fox. Him and his sister, Mildred, were geniuses. Their father had schooled them at an early age and had them working the door at his clubs and road managing the tours. They could handle money, make a deal, and analyze the subtleties of show business 
finances better than anyone I'd ever met. Oh, my God. Now, let me tell you this. Now, this is a kiki. Okay? This is a kiki if I ain't never heard one, right? So, anyway, John was a bad motherfucker. Okay? Now, while he was down there in Texas, all the people's leaving him alone. All the authorities, all the cats. You know, it's okay if you're making money off the black you know, folks, but what you cannot do is make money off the white girls, okay? Didn't I tell you niggas, okay? I don't understand why the first thing you do when you get money is you run to get a goddamn white woman, but ladies don't be mad, okay? Because like I said, majority of the time, okay, we don't want the man that want the white women's anyway. Anyway, what had happened was while he was down there in Texas, it was all good, right? But then he got his ass up and went over there to California, Okay, and he was doing some pimping in California. Child, hold tight. John could charm the skin off a snake. Women loved him. He had run out to California where he'd been a pimp. It was when a white movie actress, what white movie actress? She wound up working as his call girl. John had gone with all kinds of well-known black singers in LA, Sally Blair, Specky Green, Back in the day of Dorothy Dandridge, Lee Dorothy Dandridge's ideas, you can't tell me that Dorothy Dandridge had a pimp. Why would she need a pimp for? As beautiful as she are. Sometimes these girls don't even know their worth, child. I, I don't know. I think they was using them pimps for protection, you know, back then. I can sing, I can dance, I can act, but I need a pimp? Child, you need a manager, which back in the day were pimps. So anyway. But when he was caught selling this white woman's favors... Well, that's when they busted him big time and sent him out of state on a floater. So, you hear that, right? You hear that, right? His ass was selling black vagina all down there in Texas. When he got up here to California and he decided to to sell this movie actress white lady's star vagina, that's when his ass got in trouble. Oh, John. White women gonna be the down for all of you dumbass black niggas. He came home to walk the straight and narrow and take care of his daddy's business, but he could never be entirely straight. He was too streetwise, too brilliant, and convincing to play according to the rules. He was about Harvey's age when I met him, probably 10 years older than me, but unlike Harvey, he thought big. He never worried about my relationship with Harvey. He saw Harvey was using me, but it was a small time. The way that he looked at it like, oh, that's not a bother. A lot of bitches get used out here. Hell, I've been using bitches a long time out here, hence the pimp, okay? But I ain't gonna worry about that. She gonna spend up all her money. She gonna go broke, and then she gonna come to me, oh, Harvey spent all my money, and then we gonna start from there. If I bought Harvey a gold chain, it hardly mattered. Years later, though, when I started going with real-life pimps and signing their car notes, John intervened and hipped me to the dangers. Yeah, girl, you about to lose all your money, okay? You about to lose all your money chasing around behind all them ninjas, okay? I mean, girl, oh my God, how many times in my youth did I buy this shit? How many sneakers I bought? When it came to business, he saw I was winging it, and he'd take time to explain about advances and royalties and getting club owners to pay up front. He knew I could be lazy and scheming, but his schemes put mine to shame. I couldn't get anything past John Lewis, which is why I respected him. From 1957 until 1964, when he went off to prison, he managed the unmanageable Etta James. Etta James, you nigga, you. You a ninja for this one. So anyway, she is on tour with this dude named Floyd Dixon. All right? And they maneuvering through Texas. Remember the last time Etta James was in Texas? And she almost got them two dudes killed? Now, Etta, Etta, okay? I, I know we all have our limits. I know. But, you know, you need to stand down in situations... Like that, where, especially where you're putting your friends or co-workers in danger. So what happened was, she traveling with the dude uh, Floyd Dixon, okay, around there in Texas. Floyd Dixon stopped the police officer to ask for directions, okay? The police officer was more concerned with the white girl that was in the back, who was Etta James, because you know that's old passing bitch. The police officer says, is that a white woman in the back, boy? No, sir. That's not a white woman. She black. She black as shit. She a nigga. Etta hear the commotion, but she don't feel like being bothered. Bitch, 
You ain't learned from last time that you, girl, you about to get this boy killed. Floyd Dixon said, uh, Etta, wake your ass up and tell this patrolman that you a nigga. She ain't budged. You heard me? The damn girl ain't budged, but she hear everything that's going on. She just don't want to be bothered. Well, her skin is just as white as mine. And if she don't wake up and tell me that she a nigga, we gonna have a problem. Etta! Etta! <sighs> Faking like her ass ain't been woke the whole time. What's going on? What's going on? Etta! Girl, what the hell yeah. up is that? I'm a black woman, I said. Soon as the cop heard my voice, he knew I was telling the truth, okay? Adder, that's not the concern. The concern is you about to get some ninjas killed down here with your fuckery. This is the juicy. So now we about to unwind some of the juicy, okay? The Flame Show Bar was the black entertainment spot in Detroit. That's where the Gordy sisters, Gwen and Anna, watched that nigga at a... Because one of them Gordy's about to steal your dude, okay? Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe. Because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. Now, remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves. You babies, have a good one.